You know, math, just like anything, has its ups and downs, although we've seen more ups than downs, of course. But that reminds me of a great elevator escapade that I want to share with you. So an elevator is rising at a constant rate of 10 feet per second. So it's going up at a constant rate, 10 feet per second. Its height in feet after t seconds is therefore given by h equals 10t. Now at the instant, the very instant that the elevator is at the ground level and about to go up, a ball, like kind of in the hallway, is thrown upward with an initial velocity of 60 feet per second from that ground level. So basically, both the elevator and the ball start at the same time. And the height in feet of the ball after t seconds is given by that. Our challenge is to find the time it takes for the ball and the elevator to reach the same height. So let me see if I can kind of act this out for you, because it's kind of weird. So, so, so here's the elevator, OK? And then here's the ball. So and these are not drawn to scale. OK, so now here's the idea. The idea is that they both kind of take off at the same time. This ball is being thrown up, and this is, being, this is, is, is going up, you know, up the floor. So here we go. So kind of they go up, they lift off, right? Whoop, and this go, ball goes up, right? But let me, let me do it again. Let me do it again. Hold on. Ready? Here we go. And this ball goes thrown. Well, same time, same time. It's very hard to do. I have no coordination. Here we go. Ready? Boom. And then this catches up, you see? And this ball is going to come down. And the question is, when are they at the exact same height. Hard to do. The ball just goes up and down, bleep, bleep, and the elevator keeps going up. And I want to know when they're at the exact same height. OK, that's the challenge. All right, now we're given the, the equations for the movements, or the heights in particular, of the elevator and of the ball. And so I want to find the t that actually satisfies both heights. So I want the heights to be equal. They're at the same height. So what I want to think about is, OK, what is the t for which the heights are equal? So this is actually a nonlinear system because there's a quadratic. And I want to solve them simultaneously. So there we go. OK, how are we going to do this? Well, I'm just going to use substitution because if both of these things are h's, then I can take the 10t and insert it and replace it for this h and say 10t equals that. And then I got a quadratic equation. Let's give it the old math try. 10t equals negative 16t squared plus 60t. And of course, again, it's a quadratic. Hey, everybody, come to my house. Come on over. So I'm going to subtract 10t from both sides. And again, notice how nicely I always align up like terms, not under the t squares, but under the t's. That is the Ed Berger way. And now, when you combine these, I get a 0, which I love for quadratics. I get a negative 16 t squared, and then 60t minus 10t is like 50t. And now I want to see if I can factor this. And so how can I factor this? Well, first of all, notice there's a common <coughs> factor of t everywhere. I'm going to factor out the common factor of t, and I'm also going to co factor out the common factor of, um, of 2. <laughs> t, 2, 2, t, OK. Ask an old person because it's a good sign. Actually, I'm going to factor out a negative sign. So negative 2t. If I factor out a negative 2t from here, I'm going to be left with just a positive 8t. If I factor out a 2t from negative 2t here, I'm left with negative uh, 25. And let's just verify that. So you can always check your work. Just distribute. Negative 2t times 8t is negative 16t squared. Excellent. And then a negative times a negative is a positive. 2 times 25 is 50t. So you can actually check your answer. That equals 0. Product of two things equaling 0, only one of two ways that can happen, either one 0 or the other 0. So if this first piece is 0, that means that t has to be 0. And if this equals 0, that means that 8, I'm sorry, t has to be equal to 25 over 8. And what is 25 over 8? That's equal to 3.125. And of course, the units here, by the way, are seconds. So I should mark that down, seconds. So we see two answers. We see t equals 0 seconds, and we see t equals 3.125 seconds. So what's going on here? How come there are two answers? Well, there are two answers because there was an invisible solution at the very beginning. Remember, when they both started, they were both at the ground level. So they both, they both were at the same location. That's when t equals 0. And then they took off and did this stuff. And then the next time they matched up was 3.125 seconds later. They were at the exact same height again. So it's kind of cool that the math 
didn't know which solution you were looking for. Of course, we were looking for this one. But actually, the math finds all the solutions, including the, the first one, the initial one. So, so when math is good, math is really great, in fact. So, so here's a wonderful application where you can see why we would want to actually consider nonlinear systems and how we can easily solve them, get really cool information, and learn all about the ups and downs, not only of elevators and balls, but the ups of math. I'll see you soon.